how many of you have levels marked off on your charts okay and then you step away um, you have something that you need to go take care of that's maybe you know um, very urgent okay and then maybe you have alert set up uh, and then with, by the time you get back to your chart the markets already tapped that zone and it's left you behind it's moved away all right that's where the FOMO piece that what they call fear of missing out on a trade uh, starts to step in and bother the psyche. It starts to mess with traders' minds. Uh, even the best of them, experienced level traders. Uh, one thing I learned a long time ago, and I've been doing this for four lot for four four years now. You know, four years, but for many years now. I'm trying to say, uh, thirteen plus years now. Um, so you have to put yourself in and control uh, when it comes to trading. Okay, you have to control your own psyche. Sometimes, you know, the mind and heart don't work together. You know, it's like when you feel like something is not correct and right in the heart, um, but the mind saying do it, do it, do it. Then, you know, when the two aren't kind of synced together, then you make a bad mistake and it may cost you big time, especially when you're trading. So the way I deal with FOMO, okay, and I'm not telling anyone to follow behind exactly um, what I do. But the reason why is because I want to show you a trade setup. And I put this out on the Discord community today. And uh, I'm going to show you right now. I'm just going to go ahead and move this over. So you and I said, man, oh, man, I missed my trade. It was a level or zone, which was a high probability demand zone off my 120 range chart that I had marked. I stepped away from the charts uh, because the market hadn't tapped into it. So I figured I'd get back into the, uh, my, my, my seat in front of the charts before it did. Well, guess what? By the time I sat back down, the market had already tapped it and moved many points uh, going to the upside. All right. So one thing about it, you have to be confident in the zones that you're, that you're marking off. OK, you, you have to uh, have a, a sense of conviction when you're getting to your trades or at least marking off your, your, your zones. Ones that are high probability areas in which, you know, nine times out of ten, there's going to be rejection at. OK, and I talk about that in, in multiple videos, but this video is about FOMO. OK, the fear of missing out on an actual trade. What do I do? Someone asked me that in the uh, comments, not, not say comments on the discord. They asked me, Mike, how do you handle that? What do you do? You know, uh, for one, I don't chase. OK, I learned that the hard way many years ago about getting into the market uh, or chasing something after it happened, thinking that, OK, the market hit my zone. It's tapping to it and left me behind a little bit. But let me go ahead and get into the trade and go long. Nope, because. By the time you get to the trade, the market may be in its mode of pulling back before it continues pushing higher. And you don't want to be caught in the middle of that. You know, I always talk about, please try your best to stay out of the middle of anything, especially the middle of a leg, you know, uh, and situations. So if the market is racing to the upside after it's tapped my zone, I'm going to stay out. All right. Even if I miss the opportunity, because it's better and it's safer to have missed a trade than to get in a trade and it pulls back against you and you take drawdown and then you start to or, or you get stopped out and then you lost money on the day. Listen, if you didn't lose anything on the day, but you missed your trade, guess what? You live to see tomorrow again. You're preserving your capital. That is the number one goal in trading is preserving the capital and then number two, growing your capital. You have to protect your, your money that you are trading with, whether you are trading, you know, uh, with a prop firm um, account or you're trading with your own personal funds. You have to know. So that's like the, the mind, the psychology piece of you have to have that in check. And that's 90 percent of the game within this business of trading. The rest of it is all about tactics of learning the strategy and sticking to a trading plan. You've got to learn when and when not to trade. OK, yes, I know it's hard, for, especially for those that are in simulation and demo. You're always trying to see how much you can make on the day to see if a strategy works. But nine times out of 10, lots of people that they fail uh, even in, in demo and simulation because of the fact is, is that th their mind is just triggered and wired one way. They want to see how many setups they can actually take uh, in demo, demo and simulation. And then they want to quickly move into live trading. No, you have to treat that account in which you're in demo and simulation, just as if you're, you're trading live with your own money. When you can do that, it's called being consistent. When you can do that and set up, say maybe a $5,000 demo account. Okay. Or a thousand dollar demo account. And you are conscientious about the trades you take, taking high probability setups only. You're going to stay in the same mindset as to when you start trading 
with your own funds. Okay. Someone asked me earlier, is it possible to take a $500 small account and trade and make $100 on a day? It is. Okay. But it's not for everyone. Not everyone can do that. People who are patient, who are very focused, who are, um, who I'm not going to say driven, but um, wait for the right setups. Okay. Again, if you miss the setup, then you just don't take the trade. All right. You have to mark zones that make sense. And then when you start moving down to lower, lower base charts, you're trying to scalp real quick. The more trades I talk about the setups, the more trades you take, um, you're going to eventually probably get burnt. You're going to get tapped on the hand many times. So this is the reason why I like marking zones off of a higher base chart and using the confluence strategy that I, that I use. Marking off a higher base chart and then moving down to a lower base chart looking for a setup. Why? Because I am moving in the direction with the higher, a higher base chart. If it taps the higher base zone first, then I'm, it taps my lower base zone. Get the rejection. I'm moving in confluence with two charts. That's what I'm, that's the high probability piece of what's powerful about trading that means of confluence using two chart setups. Okay. So understand that piece there, but you have to control when and know when to stay out of the market all right the biggest part again about trading is controlling your mindset controlling your, your your own psychology and if you struggle with controlling yourself when it comes to trading you're going to you're going to win you're going to lose more than you're going to actually going to win until you get the psyche in check trust me when i say that just like everything else in life you have to be self-disciplined and, and structured if you want to succeed all right in anything in life especially in trading because this business, I'm telling you, is one of the hardest things you will ever do because you have your own personal hard-earned money tied to it. Whether you're trading with a, a prop firm, okay, and you are, um, you pass your valuation, okay, all right, and you're able to take withdrawals, you're still in that mode of protecting yourself because you want to continue receiving withdrawals. And at some point, you're going to start trading with your own live funds, right? And then that's when it even steps up a notch because now you have your own live account and you don't want to lose. But you will lose something at some point, take a loss. But you have to understand how to control that just as well. And I talk about that in many videos um, about preserving the capital, getting out of the trade early enough so you're not taking any major drawdowns. If the trade is not working against me immediately and meaning – momentum is not on my side i'm cutting the trade i'm not in the process of even trying to allow to get stopped out allowing to come back to my stop loss area or area i know where the market can come back to i'm stopping the trade early even at break even or just taking a very minimal loss okay so you have to know and, and as you get better and better and you trade more over the years in time you'll see the things that you need to work on and correct and improve this is you know this business uh, of being an actual day trader and trading futures or any particular market in which you day trade, you're going to see in time that you all can uh, constantly and will continuously uh, train yourself and become educated to become better at what you do in this business. I'm telling you, trust me. And it's like as a response, I, when I'm responding, I said, it's it's all about psychology as a trader. As you grow and become more experienced, your mistakes will get ironed out. They will. You will see the kinks, the knots in which you need to work on to improve, to become better. Because, because again, at the end of the day, you are in this business to make money, whether you're doing it uh, from a part-time or full-time basis. Now, let me show you this trade setup right here because I waited on it. And, you know, I don't get 100 opportunities a day. And I'm, looking, I'm not looking for 100 opportunities a day. If I can get one trade set up, that's all I need. I'm shutting my computer down once I've made the profit for the day maybe, maybe now I'm, I may possibly take two trades. But after I won my first trade, more than likely, I am not going to take another trade, okay? And lots of times, the market may not, based upon how I trade, may not give me multiple setups, and that's fine, okay? I'll either wait the next day and see if it's gonna give me a, a one that I can hit out the park. And this one today hit out of the park. The reason why is because this is a high probability setup to where if you pay attention to, and I always talk about this structure, the market was breaking structures to the downside. And yes, we have a low here, okay? But it did turn around and we started gaining bullish momentum to the upside where it took out highs right here. So we broke structure, okay? So now we made a new high right here at the breaking structure. There was no swing, okay? Meaning a, another area of demand resting below on the pullback until I got right here. And we've already made a high right here. So the chances of it going back and uh, coming back and testing this area right here and possibly going back and testing the highs are very high. 
okay? But it may or may not always do that. But my goal is to at least collect 20 points of the move back to this upside or more. And this is the next thing, the chapter in my book, in which I'm going to try to work on for myself, is allowing my runners to run or at least one contract to run to capitalize on a move. Because if you see here, the market went from here, 20,126 all the way up to uh, 20,253. It, it, it almost moved a hundred and let's see here. Was it 20? Yeah, like 125 points. So just think about that. If I can take out, you know, most contracts at, if I'm trading multiple and most of I'm trading two, three, four contracts, whatever the case may be, but taking out, Two contracts, and I got three contracts I entered with. The last, con the last contract I should allow, allow it to run. Because if I capture the first 20, maybe I can also capture another 20 on the, um, the, the that last contract that I'm let, I'm leaving in the market. Now, uh, so if you see the, the, the setup right here, this is a high probability setup. This is what I saw someone in, in the Discord asking about unmitigated versus mitigated zones. Unmitigated zone meaning where there's a gap at. In this case here, we don't have an imbalance resting on the inside of our zone. The imbalance is right there at the actual uh, where the zone is being marked off at. So the uh, top portion of this bearish candle where that wick is at, okay? And then the candle that broke above that going bullish, uh, where it broke above this candle right here, the next candle that forms right here didn't immediately come back and close in the gap right there. It didn't come back until right here. So there's a gap resting below the bullish wick of this candle here and the bearish wick of this bearish candle right here. So there's a gap resting right there. Sometimes you may have where there's an imbalance resting inside the zone too. And there, in that case, the market can still come back and test that area. Even after it comes down and tests, say for example, this demand area right here. It may push up, it could make a new high, and then come back and test the imbalance resting inside of it just as well. So this is a high probability zone because of the gap left behind right there, the unmitigated um, fulfillment there. Okay, so it came back and filled that area there. Now, if I go down to a lower base chart, this is what I'm going to show you. This is the lower base. Well, the, the let me do this so you can see it. Um, let's do this. Let's put it on all charts. So then if I go down to my 24 range chart, you'll see the bigger zone is that 120 range demand zone. The smaller box, I talked about in many videos, we're looking for a zone within a zone for confluence. Bigger box, 120. Smaller box is the 24 range uh, zone, demand zone inside of the larger um, demand area. Now, what you see right here is just a risk to reward tool that I pulled because think about it. If you are one that's trying to go for a one-to-one, -one, you definitely got this and more. Now, I mean, you could have got, uh, you know, a one-to-two, one-to-three, one-to-four, maybe even one-to-five off this setup right here. This is a beautiful setup. Matter of fact, let's see, let's see it, it, what it actually gave. Let me go one-to-four and see what it gave. Yeah, I mean, even on a one-to-four, it gave more than that. So this thing probably kicked off a one-to-six or more. Yeah, even higher than that. Maybe a one-to-seven. So this was a massive, um, uh, trade right here to where you could have capitalized very um very well but even if you got in for one to one right here at the break and close above the last down bearish candle right here at twenty thousand one forty three it went up to it went up to twenty thousand one fifty eight you still picked up a significant amount of points right there what did that have been like 15 points right there okay and again that's what i talk about trying to get a minimum of at least 20 points and this is just off of a one-to-one -one using that tool there for those that do trade trying to look for a one-to-one -one or one-to-two okay you could do the same all right so i'm just telling you wait for the beautiful setups like this okay um and if you miss it you just miss it do not try to like you know try to after it's made its move right here because i saw it once it started making its move i i first saw it on the higher base chart right here after it broke to the upside closed and broke this count to the upside i was late but then i'm not going to wait for anything it's like okay i missed the trade setup okay so it, you know on my part i should have stayed in front of my chart and waited for it to actually happen but it's fine i didn't lose anything i just have to wait for the next trade setup okay simple as that don't force yourself because then you're going to continuously put yourself in that vicious cycle of dealing with fomo all the time the fear of missing out and then you're going to start chasing the markets learn how to control this stuff because the sooner you're able to do so the sooner you're able to um, again, control your own psych psyche, the sooner you're going to start to do away with those, you know, those, those issues that you, that, that you struggle with on a daily basis when it comes to your own, uh, psycho, you know, psychology and you'll stop forcing things in the market. Okay. So I just wanted to say that. All right. This is more of a, you know, an advice, a, a tip, uh, type video 
from where I'm trying to share with you just based on experience of doing this for so long, things that I had to work on. So the sooner you're able to do that, trust me, patience is a virtue, is everything in this business. If you miss the opportunity, just wait, okay? All right, that's all I got for you guys today. I appreciate everyone that continuously watches the video content. I mean, I'm, I do this for a reason because I want I want to see people successful, okay? If you're not a current sub subscriber to the channel, please take the time to go ahead and subscribe by clicking on the sub button down below. Make sure to turn your post notifications on so you don't miss any of the uploads. For all those that are interested in joining the Discord, the link, if you scroll down, is right down in the description portion of the video. The first link is for the Discord. The second link you see there where it says become an elite member, um, that is for anyone who's interested in receiving the additional content to the private community for only $6.99 a month. That's it. You get access to all the trade breakdowns of trades that I posted over the Discord and I go in detail about the strategy, breaking it down so you grasp the understanding of how the strategy works, where to place your stop loss at, where to take profit at, okay? Things like that so you understand um, the strategy. I go over about, you know, unmitigated versus mitigated, gap zones and balances, all that, okay? All that, all right? As well as you get the video playlist and a great video that I did covering market structure for all those that are struggling with market structure, you might want to become an elite member and gain access to that, okay? But I'm not forcing anyone's hands. For all those that do support and are uh, private community members, part of the elite membership, you guys already know. You guys put send me, you know, tons of um, of DMs or say, Mike, we appreciate. I love the video content. It has helped me tremendously. You know, I'm glad. I'm really, really glad that you guys are learning behind it. We've had people who are successful using the strategy. And some people are still here in the community and some have moved on. I don't expect everyone to 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 stay. You know what I mean? It's like it's like a, a baby chick in, 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 the, in the nest. Once you've got the nourishment, once you've got to the point you're able to fly, then fly. Okay. Outside of that, I appreciate everyone that continues to watch the videos. If you found value in today's video content, please drop a like on it. I'll see everyone in the next one. Take care.